Yeah, so we did want to get to some questions. We have some planned questions, but also if we have time, we're gonna stop and take a moment just to field uh, one or two questions. And so be thinking about if you have a question, maybe something Jason or Shannon said that stirred up a question, uh, we wanna create time for that as much as we can. So we'll, go, we'll start with a couple and then we'll get to your questions in a moment. Uh, just to start, you guys talked about your kids a little bit. Uh, Jaya, if you could talk about our kids, kind of introduce where you are as a parent and give one phrase that would describe your stage of parenting right now. Jay, okay, so my name is Jaya and uh, we have three kids. So our oldest is a girl and she's 12, seventh grade. We have a son that is nine and he's in third grade. And then we have a daughter that's six and she is in first grade. And if I had to describe our season, it would be we're in the thick of it, I would say. True that. <laughs> that's kind True of a that. Broad, Indeed, <laughs> indeed you are. <laughs> You want to tell them about our kids? Um, so we have three. We have two boys and a girl. Um, our oldest is, is he 22? Yeah. 22. He's married and um, is working and supporting a family, which is awesome. And our second boy is 21. He's at ASU. He's in his uh, junior year at, of school and um, probably is going to ask a girl to. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Make it online. Yeah, so. no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, so it's happening. It's coming. It's coming. He's probably going to ask a girl to marry him this week, so yeah. it's kind of crazy and exciting. Um, and then our youngest is 18. She just graduated from high school, and she's off in Germany studying and kind of just enjoying life. And people have been like, are you really sad or are you missing them? And I'm like, no, like... We wanted to raise kids who could go out and be independent and live in the world with the foundations we gave them, and we did it. I feel very accomplished. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I feel like I deserve that consultant fee. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so our phrase is, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys should get paid a million dollars a year. <laughs> just for they, a they should yeah. pay us a they million dollars. You. Yeah. No, you with know what? Interest. Hey, let me, I will say this. <laughs> like, uh, our kids will never know. They'll just never know how yeah. much it takes and how much we gave. Just like we didn't know with our kids, like I'm certain. With our parents. I mean, with, with our parents, parents, I mean. Yeah, so yeah. it's just, uh, parenting is such a sacrificial We're thing. We're gonna show them this video later, so they will know after this. So, um, all right, hey, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Yes. All right, get a little edgy. Uh, let's answer some real questions that people wanna know about. Uh, everybody's here because they want to be better parents, mm -hmm. right? And they come to a thing like this on a Monday night, even some couples who, again, don't have kids. Again, great decision. Everybody's here because they want to learn, grow as a parent, probably feel unqualified to be a parent. How do you balance growing as a parent, like books, podcasts, conferences, community, nights like this, with, hey, at some point, you got to trust God. you got to give yourself grace. How do you balance growing... How do, you, how do you grow as parents, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also how do you just, hey, they're God's kids, we're going to trust him. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, think, I think we are never prepared to be parents. Um, I think each new stage, we're never prepared for that new stage. But I will say having friends who are at the same stage of life have the same values that you have are instrumental in um, just being there to say you're not alone in this, hey, we did this, or try this, or just having friends. I know we talked about that other friend that had two girls, but we had friends that had boys, and it was such a relief to go and hang out with them because they understood where we were coming from as parents, and you could relate to them, and that was such a sweet friendship. So I think really finding friends that you're in the same stage of life was good for, was helpful for us. Mm -hmm. And also we're believers. Mm -hmm. For yes. us, that was yeah. important. So similar stage, similar values yeah. to bounce ideas also off yeah. of and grow yeah. together. Yeah, that's good. I want to add, I do like the idea of the friends part because even if you don't have kids yet, yeah. um, really taking the time to like talk with people who have kids or like are even a stage ahead of you, I have found that to be just very life giving of like what does it look like for you to like, you know, pursue God in your season because you're probably not really getting sleep if you're in the early stage. Right. And so like, yep. Yep. you know, if you're only able to read one, you know, verse and that's just what's life giving for you, like 
you know, take in what you can. And so I feel like I just learned little bits and pieces of asking questions from parents who were just a few seasons ahead of me Mm -hmm. was really helpful. And so what did it look like for you to parent in that season? What did it look like for you to see God? Yeah. I read Jesus Storybook Bible and, you know, read about Moses and it was great. You know, and that can be life-giving. God's word is living and active. So trying to just see God in any way you can. I think what's, that's been super helpful for us. That's yeah. why we hang out with you guys. The only reason is to ask you, hey, we're writing that down as you say that. Yeah. Um, no, but it is. Yeah, just you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And even if it's somebody in the same life stage ahead of you, that's the beauty of community, right, as we can learn yeah. from one another. So that's good. I, I definitely, yeah. oh, I, I, uh, I remember nights, you know, after fighting to put the kids down and all that stuff, nights just going to bed thinking, man, I wish I had this day back. Like, I just really blew it today. And I don't know if I had the wherewithal in the moment to think about this, but I think there's, 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 a, there's a lot of grace in a new day. Um, the Bible even says that, that God's mercies are new every day. And I think that's the beauty of the life that we live and the way that we live it is tomorrow is it's a new day. And um, I also think it's no, um, it's no mistake that when the Bible talks about God's relationship with us, it's often in terms of father and child. And so those times when I would remember like, all right, I have a heavenly father who loves me in spite of my failures today as a parent or as a husband or as a whatever. Uh, being regrounded and rooted in that love of God and finding my significance from him in that and not in my ability to be a great parent is critical. That's good. Second question. Um, Kids are unique souls. Amen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're complex, right? None of them are the same. Uh, Every stage is different. When I know for us, we have 12, 9, and 6. Every time we think we've conquered this thing, they change, (laughs) they evolve, right? And there's new challenges. So kids are all different in their ages, stages of life, personalities, like all those sorts of things. How do you parent different kids in different ways? What does that look like? (laughs) Over to you. (laughs) Um, Well, you, you, you begin to pick up on what it is they value. You know, so like within the example with our son, Jesse, hey, mom, will you, and he had this really scratchy voice when he was little, you know, can you, <laughs> you come out here and, and, and watch me dig a hole? Well, he, he valued that quality time. And uh, our, other, our other son wouldn't ask for that necessarily. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it would be other things, um, you know. It, so I think just observing our kids and being, being available to them in the different ways that they feel cared for and loved and seen. Um, one of our boys would, was very physical, uh, so like with wrestling and stuff, I mean, he just would get in there. And then our other son wanted to wrestle, but he wasn't quite as, you know, like into it that way. And so, and then our daughter so was, body slammed our him. daughter was insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She had no, no boundaries at all. And so I just, you know, knees everywhere. Um, you, you almost have to become students of your children. It's just another, I know, it's just one more thing we have to do as parents, right? Yeah. But um, you have to kind of watch them. You have to be people observers and watch your kids and see the things that they're doing. So our daughter loves giving gifts. So it's like, oh, she probably would like a gift because that's how she shows her love to others. And I, maybe you've heard this or not, but the, there's love languages where they just, they want to share their love with you. And if they're doing that, then you can do it back to them and show them that love in return. But she, yeah, giving her gifts and, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, you become a student of your children. That's good. And I feel like, too, just not you having expectations on your kids or just things that you think it should be. Because this question reminded me, just this afternoon, I telling the kids they need to do their homework and things like that. So one of my kids sits down, starts reading his chapter book he's gonna read and um my other one turns on descendants three and has a dance party like for like five minutes she couldn't like sit down and do her homework until she had her dance party and to me I'm like you know in my mind I'm like okay this is homework time everyone's sitting doing so just the idea of like everyone has different personalities and like it's really sweet because that's just 
this child's personality and mm -hmm. she needed a few minutes to get some energy out. Right. <laughs> She's really great at it. But uh, anyway, so I think for me, it's just reminding, I do have like these things in my head of like academics or just like working really hard and like, and knowing our kids are going to grow into that and understanding that God has wired them differently. Like mm -hmm. one is like, likes to process more. And so we sit and we process, you know, things at school and things that are going on. So just being willing to, like you guys have said, just but seeing your kids individually, but I feel like it's so important to see their different gifts and getting to speak into that because then you get to see them light up and they're excited that you are throwing the ball with them or you're sitting and processing this with them or yeah. getting up and doing the dance party when you yeah. ask them to do homework. But um, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good example, Jaya. Like just, because as parents, we have like this idea of, all right, now it's, it's homework time. You know, and, and it can, that can become like this huge disciplinary thing when in reality our kid just needs to get, you know, just kind of dance it out a little bit. I mean, I get it. I got I to gotta dance out all sorts of things. Uh, I made, you made me think of uh, two of our kids, they just get hangry. Oh. And we would find ourselves early on in like these disciplinary situations when really they just needed At fruit. All ages. They needed all fruit ages. snacks, yeah, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah, to this day we're just like, uh, here's some cheese. <laughs> Yeah. Like, we'll talk we'll in ten. This we'll talk in ten minutes. After you've eaten this, yeah. I think also too, it's really important to define success. And yeah. success is not looking like every other kid at right. your school. Yeah. And probably for parents, it's not looking like your best friends that are you think are great parents and their kids are great kids, whatever that means right now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they can, it's okay to, you said this in your talk, it's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. And the things that we want to be consistent are, we want you to know Jesus. We want you to marry somebody someday who knows Jesus. Mm -hmm. We want you to have the Holy Spirit of God, the fruit of the Spirit. That's ultimately success. I think I get caught up in, uh, even now, uh, this isn't like long ago, time ago in my past sin, uh, like Saturday at the soccer game. These are the illustrations I use all the time. Uh, I'm, I have issues, uh, church. <laughs> but, you know, I want my kid to be uh, like a certain way in sports, certain way in grades, and uh, certain, you know, the way people see them. And when I look at the Bible, I don't see that as a measure of success anywhere. I do see things like Paul saying, hey, there's faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? Love God and love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And just what if the measure of success was just, I want Ashwin to be a loving, you said it, Kim. I want him to be a loving child. I want him to love people like Jesus. What if that was success? Well, he can do that in soccer or chess. Please, God, make it soccer and not chess, <laughs> just personally. But, but you know what I'm saying? And your kid can do, I mean, it's just like that's, if we measure success according to the Bible and don't get caught up in keeping up with some boxed out cookie cutter version of what success is at your school in Phoenix with these friends, that helps. Because then you give your kids freedom to be different yeah. and can take that as it goes. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Um, here's one more question. And then if you guys have a question. Um, every stage of parenting is so different, cradle to college. How do you balance discipline with grace? Yeah, I think a good setup for this is we've all seen the parents who are just like, they've read every parenting book, they have every strategy down on a whiteboard, they're just executing it like crazy, and maybe that works for a while, but then their kids walk away from Jesus, walk away from the church, hooked on drugs, whatever, and we're like, how did that happen? They knew all the things. They knew all the strategies. They had all the discipline strategies. Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate between, yeah, we want strategies, discipline, structure, mm -hmm. but also grace and relationship? What does that look like? Well, I, uh, my first thought on this, I don't mean to be contentious here, Tim, is Bring it. We, I, don't, I don't think we need to um, oppose those. I think discipline is grace and can and should be great, gracious and done in grace. Um, we have a, a gracious God who, who disciplines us. And there's all sorts of passages in the Bible that talk about that fact that one of the ways that we see the love of God is through his discipline. Um, 
but I do, I get what you're saying though too. Like there's this kind of like where there is on one end, like kind of this, this heavy handedness of almost control. And then on the other hand, it's just complete, almost a hands off of just kind of letting our kids right. run amok and, and, and yeah, get away with, with whatever. And, um, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> no, I think that's, I mean, I think you already answered it. Those don't have to contradict one another. Yeah. Like God disciplines the one he loves. Yeah. Right. And I think, um, I think that's where we find ourselves though, is like, we have to be so, so structured, like pick every thing that they do and make that a battle, die on that hill. Mm-hmm. Or we're just like, I'm so tired. It's late at night. Just Anything goes, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I find that we swing in and out. I don't know if you guys find that on the pendulum of those things. And I think, especially, I think now, you know, there's such a conversation about, are we, are we too coddling to our kids? Grit, do we need to help them, like, fail in life and be more resilient in life? And just, like, which one do we go, yeah. you, you know, towards? And I think, yeah, biblically, it's not just, like, hey, no, your kid, they're acting out because they need to be seen. You just need to be more empathetic. Like, yes, you do, but sh- they can be seen as you are stern. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I sometimes drift of like, well, if I don't, if I uh, just discipline them right now, that's not seeing them, that's shaming them, mm-hmm. you know? And I think the reality in scripture is, no, you can see them, you can say, like I think with our kids, the few times I get this right is, Hey, I know that must be hard. Hey, man, that hurts me too. Like, I, I don't even want to be having this conversation right now. Like, I wish we weren't, but we are. Like, I get this is not fun for you, mm-hmm. but these are the consequences we pre-decided, and I love you too much to let you disobey, you know, that yeah. kind of conversation. And I think uh, so many times as parents we see, like, no, I, if I discipline, that means I'm shaming them because you can shame them. Let's not shame them. Like, why don't you don't deserve this anymore? So taking it away. No, it's like, hey, I see you. I get this means a lot to you. But mm-hmm. here's this, and balancing those two out. Do you have anything to add to that? I, I think. <laughs> I think. Do you have something? Okay. Are you sure? Okay. Um, uh, I th- so many times we get caught up in discipline, and we're just we're just trying to augment behavior. Yeah. And that's not gracious. Right. So I think what I'm hearing you say is, is getting below the surface of that and getting yeah. to the heart of the matter. That is, that's gracious discipline yeah. is, is, is doing that. And, and um, I will say, you know, when it comes to like teaching our kids grit, like you said, yeah. I, I think we made a conscious effort and decision like we know that the world's going to do that. <laughs> like they're, the kids at school are going to do that. Yeah. Uh, that's that's going to happen. Now, we're also not going to tell them they can do anything that they want because that's just not, that's a lie. Right. They, they, they can't. But speaking truth into the ways that God has made them and speaking blessing into our kids, yeah. um, I think that's really, really important uh, rather than sp- speaking curses. Uh, yeah. is, is really Provoking them to anger. Provoking them yeah, to anger, that's yeah. That's good. Yeah. Any questions from you guys? Uh, AC, where are you at? Right here. If you'll stand up. You guys have a question, AC will bring the mic around to you. Don't be shy. Right there. My memory is terrible, so I forgot to type this in the thing. But um, So coming from, my husband came from, he was a pastor's kid. And so his faith was very much, and I kind of have been in their family for like the last decade of my life and involving a lot of my teenage years. Um, so a lot of our faith, I feel like was kind of shoved down our throat. Like, this is what you're going to believe. This is, you know, this is what we believe. We go to church on Sundays and, you know, these are all the, the kind of rules and the legalistic side, um, of Christianity that we believe in. And so I feel like it really rocked our faith and still is. I mean, we're still like, you know, in our late twenties trying to navigate what our faith looks like now as a result of that lifestyle. 
Um, so how do you, how did you navigate like introducing faith um, when your kids are little and then as they've gotten older, like without forcing it on them, if that makes sense? It's a great question. Yeah. I'll speak to the earlier got- years because they can speak to the later. But I would say for us, that's been helpful for when they were to our oldest being 12. I think we make it a daily conversation. So even when it comes to like, you know, putting your food away or like even just talking like I'm, we're sitting outside like, well, isn't that cool that God made the clouds and like just that God's a part of every part of our life. So when it, you're talking about friends and we're sitting in the car, um, you know, memorizing scripture, anything like that to where it's just God's not just telling us what to do all the time and it's just this God that's just like over us. But I'm hoping For our children, we really want them to know God's a personal God that loves us and that we have a personal relationship with him, and we want that for you, and he wants that for you. Um, You know, even the other day with TMV, she was getting a bowl out of the drawer. Sorry. Trying not to say her kids' names, but it just happens. um, You're doing great. (laughs) But she was like, isn't that crazy? Like, God knew I was going to do that. And he knew I was going to say that. And it's just because we've taught her, like, that God knows, he knows what you're going to say before you say it. Like, he just knows you. He's gone before us. And so teaching those concepts where it's not, like, this God that's just over you. But hopefully our kids are seeing just a God that loves you. And when you're figuring out things at school with your friends and, you know, weird conversations and someone said something mean, like, yeah, like how do we love them in the midst of that and how has God created you and where is your identity? It's not in what that person said, but it's who God made you to be. So that's up to the coaching stage. <laughs> that's good. Um, I think that um, one of the things we tried to do in the zero to five years, it, I think you're doing a lot of that, just you know, teaching them loving things and the values and morals of the Bible and talking about Jesus. And as they got older, I think we tried really hard not to let the fact that he was a pastor, again, dictate how we were going to um, allow church to be a fishbowl for them. So in regards to like um, not caring what they wore to church, um, not telling them what they had to believe. There were conversations that Jason had with the kids as they would struggle with questions. I think one of our boys in junior high was like, I don't know if I even believe in Jesus. And Jason was able to just have conversations with him and ask him questions. Again, not freaking out, you know, but really being able to have discussions with them. But um, And that's where, and, and recognizing that that's a... Like topics like that, those are marathon topics. Yes. That's not something I'm gonna fix tonight. Yeah. It's quote unquote, you know yeah. what I mean? And there's and it probably stemmed from many other variables of what's going on in their friends' lives mm-hmm. and things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, and we tried not to make our kids feel like they had to Jason planted a church when our kids were just hitting high school and they had you know, these big dreams of being part of the youth ministry at Scottsdale Bible and all the kids. And suddenly we're taking them to this tiny church and we were like, hey, we'll drive you to SBC to go to youth group there. We want you to come to church with us at our church and be a part of this youth group, but we're also going to drive you there if that's what you want to do. No, I think we even gave them the option. Yeah. At that point, you know, it's those choices. Like, We'll take you to this other church if you want to go be part of the youth You could be a part of three different youth groups yeah. for all we care. Like, yeah. say, you want to spend our... more time at church? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We send our 12 year old to like every youth group in Phoenix. Yeah. So yeah. They all know so, about yeah. Phoenix well, that's, Bible Church. That's just free childcare. Yeah. I, don't that that's, right. yeah. 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 I don't know if that's. And I don't know if that answers your, your question. Well, it, that's an important question. Yeah. Because it, it is a fine line. Yeah. And we hate the term indoctrination, but that is essentially what we're doing as parents uh, with whatever worldview you have. Uh, that's just how it works. That's the nature of learning and that kind of discipleship and mentorship that is just really, really concentrated when you're a parent. So someone, something is going to indoctrinate our kids. And if I believe wholeheartedly in a Jesus who rose from the dead 
and is coming again one day to reestablish his kingdom here on earth, and we get to be a part of that as we trust in him and follow after him, I want my kids to know that Jesus as well. Yeah. And so I don't think that's, a, that's a, not a bad thing. However, uh, there is this, especially in those teenage years, they're beginning to make their faith their own. And one of the things that um, we kept saying in youth ministry is we want to create, we want to be an environment where kids come to a crisis of faith in high school because it's going to happen. And we'd rather it be now while they're still with us under our roof than away at college. So let's open it up. Let's have these hard conversations. Let's create that. And so just, just to be completely vulnerable and candid, one of our, our sons, our, our, our middle son, about a year or more ago, uh, was confirmed in the Catholic Church and is now very just devoted to, to that, that lane of Christianity. He loves Jesus, and he, but he loves the, 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 um, uh, reverence. the reverence. He loves the meaning behind everything. And we have really lively conversations about things we agree to disagree on. But he loves Jesus and he's following Jesus in that context. And so he, he felt like he could, in a context of our family, make that decision that was very different from the evangelical church that we've grown up in and, and, and planted even in our leading. But it's been a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I'm, I was going to ask you guys to share that because we talked about it last week. And yeah. I just think that's such a great picture of that, that he, you're a pastor, and you, you, Shannon, you even talked about, like, it's just some of your friends will be like, where's, how come they live yeah. in the same city? Where? Yeah. But you guys have given your kids that kind of freedom. And he goes to mass, like, every week. He's invited Multiple you guys times. to yeah. it. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah. I'll, go, I'll go with him from time to time. Yeah. yeah. What a cool picture of, uh, of that, of that truth and grace full of both. It, and it's yeah. so cool because now, like, I feel like the disciple and, and, you know, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing in the Catholic church, you know, and, and he's like explaining it to me and telling, you know, and it's just really sweet. So. Yeah. I would say too, just one brief thing, because I know a lot of uh, families in our church have little kids, yeah. is recognizing that they're lost. Not like lost, like they're just kind of confused in life. Most likely your five-year-old doesn't have the Holy Spirit yet. Mm -hmm. And you're, maybe your 10-year-old. And how do you treat your lost neighbor? You know, do you expect them to obey all the rules, get geeked up about going to church every Sunday? Are you, are you shocked when they're doing crazy things? No, you're like, well, they don't know Jesus yet. Mm -hmm. But with our kids, we're like, well, no, you kind of quasi have the Holy Spirit because I raised you, right? <laughs> you should know how to do this. You should know how to go to church every Sunday. You should love it every time. You should bring your Bible every time. And, if they're eight and they don't and they have don't have a regenerate heart yet, they don't that doesn't come naturally to them. Right. And so think about, you know, we're supposed to love our neighbor. They're your closest neighbor. How would you love your actual neighbor? You wouldn't be shocked by what they said. This is the hardest thing for us, specifically with a 12-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. is man, she does start to open up and I I'm shocked. <laughs> oh, yes, please share. It's okay. We, we love, we love, yes. That's, that's yeah. when you pretend to be thirsty. Yeah. And you just... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How did you know? Were you there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been there. But just recognize, especially, that, like, they don't know Jesus yet, and the best thing you can do is pray for them to have the Holy Spirit, not attend a religious service. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I think just keeping that mindset, we put so much expectations on our kids before they even have the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. um, hey, we're winding down. We, there's so much to talk about, isn't there? Uh, last time uh, we did this, it was on singleness and dating, and my wife did a follow-up video. We'll probably do something like that again because there's more questions we could get to, but we know parents, bedtimes, kids' schedules, all those things. We're not trying to make parenting harder on you guys. Uh, we want to make it easier on you. And so uh, just want to end with uh, this. I think sometimes the best way you can be a, a better parent is to be a better spouse. Yeah. And then keep a brief Cliff Notes version, but just what does it look like to invest in your marriage as, as parents? And maybe you guys just end us with that. What does it look like, baby? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this. <laughs> um, I think we were very conscientious about 
doing the things we like to do together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we ever found ourselves not having a like thing to do, we changed that. Yeah, so like date nights or date afternoons or whatever. Yeah, but even more than that, like we, the things we liked to do when we were just the two of us, like outdoorsy stuff or yeah. doing projects together, we made a point of still doing that, even though our kids were running around our feet and we made them come with us on a lot of those things. But it was almost like we were like, hey, this is what we like to do, so you three come along. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, oh, well, Joey likes to do this, so we're going to go do only what he likes. I, I don't know if you ever have this. As a parent, sometimes I look back and I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> but like, I remember like, the worst Christmas they can remember is we bought them all backpacking gear. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh, you like that, right? Oh, oh that's a nice backpack. Now put it on and Yeah, hike. try it on. Yeah. <laughs> now get out there and sweat. I think they remember that. And they're like, we were just opening backpacking stuff. And we're like, what? And we're like, well, we like it. So you are too. <laughs> yeah, so doing the fun stuff. That, yeah. That Do it, yeah, doing makes the Makes you fun guys stuff. joyful, which yeah. is going to yeah. help you guys be more connected. Yes. Yeah. Is going to spill over into your kids' yeah. lives. Yeah, and being intentional too. Uh, yeah. So I would say being intentional, yeah. so like scheduling intimacy, you know, yes, stuff like yes. that. Scheduling yeah. intimacy, as yeah. boring as that sounds. Yeah. Kids yeah. are in bed, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then they're teenagers and, you know, they're up way longer than you are and their friends are out there and they're playing, you know. Rock band. Rock band and stuff. And you're just like, all right. Well, We're like, well, we could probably sneak back to our <laughs> yeah. room. No one should be knocking no. on the door. They're singing. I think we have like three minutes. So like <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all turn it up really loud? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, just uh, maintaining a sense of humor. Yes. And I would say, even back to your question about, like, like that balance of, yeah. uh, with discipline and, and raising kids, but also just with us, yeah. and just having a sense of, because it's hilarious. I mean, yeah. we're all laughing about it now, right, in <laughs> hindsight. And I think we can probably laugh a little bit more about it in the moment, too. Yeah. So, At least that's, that's me preaching to me. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's great. Hey, can you guys thank these guys again for joining us and my wife as well? I saw Jaya taking tons of notes. I saw other people taking notes. This has been so helpful. So thank you guys for giving Thanks us. Thanks for having night. us. Uh, My pleasure. And we have so much more we could talk about. I have a lot of notes just for this panel. We'll probably do a follow-up video, so be looking for that. Uh, we do have in two weeks from tonight a married night just like this. And so you guys can come back for that. We'll definitely talk about marriage. We have uh, Don and Renee Wooster coming uh, to speak. And there are no Jason and Shannon Fisher. No, they but are. they're great. But they're good. They yeah, so, they're good. so fun they're fact, good. Yeah. their daughter is best friends with our daughter. That's right. So, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. We're, We're just keeping yes. it in the family, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my wife and I have been to one of their marriage retreats. Uh, we send people there. This is what they do. This is their wheelhouse, and they're coming. I mean, honestly, we had to change schedules around three times to get these guys here. So They're very important. November 8th, they're very yeah. big time. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and register for that. We'll continue this conversation. We really do. We want this to be... Not the end of a conversation, but the start of one. So, um, man, have follow-ups with us, with Pastor AC. We want to continue this dialogue together. Let me pray, uh, and then you guys can go grab your kids. Father in heaven, uh, I do thank you for the fishers. I thank you for Jaya uh, just being vulnerable to share about their own lives. Uh, God, as much as they shared about biblical wisdom, that they also shared about personal wisdom and personal failures. And uh, that's just so helpful to see that we're not in this alone. And I just got to think some people here tonight as parents feel like failures and maybe feel like it's too late, maybe feel like um, they've just made too many mistakes. And um, God, I just pray that tonight would help lift them up and know that it's not too late, they're not too far gone, that nobody is for the grace of Jesus Christ. And I just pray over our parents, over every kid represented in this room, that you would give them the Holy Spirit of God, save them sanctify them by the power of your spirit and do that. Give us the privilege, if you would, by your grace uh, to, to have that happen through us. Uh, God, that's our prayer. So we thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. amen, amen. Thank you guys so much for coming. Have a great night.